between the airplanes. That, that means a, that's a very important thing to an airline, same as important. But, but yeah, you can't beat the trouble. There's no way. John Cashman did too good a job on that. I remember John Cashman. Yeah. Oh, by the way, before I forget, um, uh, Van was talking about the HUD. Uh, we will, just for you to hang on, we will uh, land the airplane when we're done. When we, we won't land the Beijing, we'll land the Boeing field, but we're going to land the airplane. Yep. Uh, another question, though, Van. Okay. How much commonality is there between the 777X and the 787? Do you have to train differently? For the X, if you're already qualified on 777 or 87. Can you talk a little bit about that? You bet. So if you're familiar with the 87, the layout is basically the same. They have the same big flat screen that we do. They don't have touch screen, but they, they probably will eventually. So the layout, the geometry is almost the same. So any pilot coming from that airplane will look at this and go, oh, I know where this is, that is. The buttons are all in about the same place. The overhead panel is similar. So yeah, you, there's very little training needed. I mean, basically, you're just going in and just trying to figure out how to program things. The flying characteristics are the same. The geometry of this area is almost identical to the to the 87. So, uh, yeah, if you're jumping from one car to the next car, the inside of the car looks the same and it handles the same. As an analogy. All right. All yeah. right. Hey, that's that's really great. Other other features about the the flight deck, maybe the lighting. Though we have our camera lighting here, you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, you can't see it in here, but this airplane's been upgraded with LED lighting, and that really helps lower the temperature of some of these switches. And the LED lights last for thousands of hours, so it's less maintenance for the airline. But every single light in the overhead panel and in the airplane will essentially be LED going forward into the future. You know, I was I was uh, a remiss. I mean, you want to tell us a little bit about about your your uh, history with the Boeing company? I think people really want to know. Oh well, yeah. So it's, I was been with Boeing about 22 years. I started out in, uh, as, a, in as as an engineer and worked my way through uh, as a pilot. I was flying years before I came to Boeing, but I've been 22 years here. I was on the 87 program and all the 777 programs in that time. You know, the standard stuff. You can fly everything the Boeing company. Cool. Has built. Yeah. Great. Standard. Yeah. For Boeing pilot. So we have uh, other questions from uh, from our our friends out in the out around the world. Oh my gosh, more countries. Uh oh. Uh, Turkey, Italy, Germany, Madagascar, Indonesia, Morocco, Tanzania, and the United Arab Emirates. Are okay. Also, we're, we're awesome. We're making a turn here, Van. Yep. Okay. Um, so now, I guess, uh, are there any other uh, features in terms of the hardware we have here on our center console that's, that's a little bit different? Yeah, so one thing the airplane has internally is a system called P-Beta, and that, what that does is it compensates for a lot of airplane failure, say an engine failure, and it makes training very simple. In the, in the older airplanes, you had to use your foot a lot if you had an engine out condition, and in this airplane, it automatically compensates for that kind of failure. So the pilot can literally just steer. He has time to think about the emergency procedures, getting on the runway. He doesn't have to worry so much about what he's doing with his hands and his feet. The airplane automatically compensates for all of those things. And that, a lot of that software was developed on the 87, and then we included it in this airplane to give it kind of an upgrade over the 777. Cool. Oh, ah, good question. Uh, why? So you showed us the touch screens before? Yep. So why why touch screens? What was the, the, the philosophy behind adding touch screens? So the big thing is it meets it really meets our customers' expectations going in the future. I mean, if you have a screen now, you expect to be able to touch it. Whether it's in a car, on a phone, on an iPad, you expect to be able to touch it. Customers have that same expectation. But the, the really cool thing is there's no training required. You just say it's touch screen. The guy can go in there and figure it out without really any foreknowledge in what to do. He just starts programming. So that, that's a remarkable, a remarkable change in technology. But looking forward into the future, the things I can't even think about, five, ten, this technology changed so, so fast, we've given that design space for the technology that we can't even think of in five, ten years down the road. And what guys will come up with for touch. So we just said, here's your sandbox, go. You know, when this airplane goes into service. So, could you tell us? I know you tell us a little bit about how these touch screens were tested because we do have sort of a company sandbox yep. where we did this testing. We we do. We beat these screens to death. One of the first things we did was we put these in a, a motion cab 
and we put the airplane under turbulent conditions because we want to find out, hey, what happens if the guy accidentally touches something? Or can he program under turbulent conditions? And so we would literally, we'd literally be beating ourselves to death doing tasks that the flight deck engineers wanted us to do. <laughs> yeah. And so the touch screen's getting beat, we're getting beat, and we're figuring out how to touch these things. And then there, these are conditions far worse than you normally have in service. But uh, so we designed some features like the bezel so you can kind of hang your fingers on something while oh, you cool. touch it. You can see it's hard to see in the camera, but there's these little bezel features that you can kind of hang on to. Those came directly out of that kind of testing. What about multi-touch? Is that is that yep. We, so multi-touch is, 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 is in this design space. You put your fingers on the area of interest and you can spread it just like an iPhone. Oh. Yeah, so multi-touch is part of this program. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, we've got that built in. Great. Other, other questions, Karen? <laughs> so we're, 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 headed over, we're headed over to Beijing. We are. I don't know when. Sort of. Uh, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when. Well, so we want to make sure we want to make sure we land on time. I don't know when you want to uh, uh, touch, uh, start the approach. But you know what? You told me something while we were uh, getting ready about the actual physical cab, the physical yep. structure that we're yep. in. You want yep. to tell tell our tell everyone out there a little bit about that? So, so it's kind of cool inside feature, and it's why you're here. You get this inside knowledge. This. What we're sitting in actually came off a real airplane. It was one of the very first airplanes that we delivered to Emirates. So all the outer primary structure, we literally found the airplane in the desert. We bought it back and we, took, we basically cut the nose off the airplane and we shipped it to Boeing Field. And then we disassembled it and put it in this spot and we started plugging in all the new stuff. But this literally was an airplane that flew for years and years and years wow. with an airline, Emirates. Wow. Yeah. yeah, pretty cool. Inside day. So, <laughs> so we're cruising along. I, I know uh, we've increased the use of uh, composites yep. in the flight deck. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, so the, the, not so much in the flight deck, but we did utilize composites for the airplane wing. The airplane wing is essentially all composite now, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of utilization there. There's other various parts and features. But in the flight deck, uh, it, mostly it's uh, the flat screen displays, an upgrade in uh, some of the avionics, and then the software that drives the airplane. But uh, they're not, not, not a huge use of composite materials here. There will be some composite shielding and so forth that you can't see, it's not installed yet, that will, okay. will come in later as okay. the cab gets finished. Well, uh, well, then I looked at my watch, and uh, we want to be on time to Beijing. Yep. Okay. So I think uh, you want to land. Let's. Uh, well, I don't want to land because I'm having too good of a time. But <laughs> let's uh, let's let's start the let's start the landing sequence. Okay. Well, I'm going to put you to work. Doing That's my, okay. I'll try. <laughs> put the gear down. Oh, That'd gear be the first down. thing. Yeah. This is like really. It's like really cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is a check ride for yeah, you, by yeah. the way. Gear down. All right. So we're we're going to make a left hand turn right now. Boeing Field. Uh, it's right over here to my left, so I'm going to turn the airplane all the way around and go over there. Now, if you'll move the flaps to 20. Flaps 20. Yep. Okay. And that'll get us set up uh, for an approach configuration. So yeah. I'll, this is my speed control. I'm going to dial that back to 174. That we'll goes the, uh, the auto throttle, right? The That's right. So moving. notice I'm not touching anything. It's all automated. It's really, I just spin some buttons and dials, and, and you do all the work. <laughs> That's the way it should be. <laughs> so, so we could have gone to Beijing, but we're a little short on time. Uh, Van's got some work to do, so we're going to head back to, to Boeing Field. Don't tell my boss. No. I'm not here at all. <laughs> so I'm going to use touch screen. I'm going to I'm going to move one of these fixes to the top up here, and I'm going to hit uh, execute. That's it. Now I've programmed uh, the three steps. I program the route into Boeing Field. I'm done. That, my job is finished. I, I've programmed the route. Yeah. I, I've selected approach, and the airplane is going to make a right hand turn and uh, land at Boeing Field. I'm okay. not going to touch anything. Even though, even though you're done, don't, don't go anywhere. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so now if you'll select the landing flap, that's that uh, flap 30. 30. Yep. Flaps 30? Yep. Okay, flaps 30. We'll put a speed in here, and I guess we don't have a huge amount of time to check a checklist, but uh, I've got uh, the airplane set up. I've armed the speed brake. That little message comes up. So are we doing an auto auto land? If you want to, or you can land it. No, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> oh, come I, on. I think, I think it'll be okay. I think we'll, we'll let the airplane do the, the airplane and you do the work. Yeah. Well, I've, I've got it set up for an auto land, but, uh, you know, I, I, hate, I hate to give oh, up a landing of any hey, kind. Go, go my, for it. My buddies will tell me. So Bo Boeing Field is actually right on the nose now. And... Uh, We've captured what's known as the localizer. That's the, the directional course into the field. And now we're going to, uh, actually, I'm just going to turn the autopilot off here for a bit. And we'll just make a, 
we'll just aim at the field. I just want to show you how simple this is. Okay. <laughs> so, so notice the throttle's coming back, and I'm I, I'm not I'm not really working or steering or anything like that. I've got the the field on the nose, and I'm actually right now I'm just looking through the HUD, and I I, I just align the airplane symbology with the landing zone, and and it just it, it just let it fly itself right to the ground. Okay. Yep. And 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 I got time here. I'll go ahead and set the auto brake. That, that the system will automatically brake for me on touchdown. So, so when the when when the airplane hits the ground, what what kind of things will we see with the thrust reversers? So what will happen uh, is the speed brake will come up automatically. Okay. And then I'll use the thrust reversers to reverse the thrust of the engine to help slow the airplane down just a little bit. And uh, and that's really all there is to it. But uh, but I've got the symbology I need right now lined up on the runway, and I can literally fly this airplane completely heads up without ever looking down. Wow. And uh, if a little Cessna or some other traffic pulls in front of me, I'll see it, and I can kind of move out of the way or make him move, whatever, whichever comes first. Yep, I, and, can, uh, I, I can see the runway. Yep. So, so Van, would you, would you consider this a, a simulator in terms of uh, uh, how it works in terms of training pilots, or is it a... Is it, a, is, it, is it more than just a simulator? You, you can train pilots in this. This is more than just a simulator. It's got a lot of engineering features you don't have in a simulator. But, uh, but you can train pilots in here. In fact, we've done a lot of training. And we will do a lot of training when it comes to the, to the major program. Right. We'll have guys in here practicing maneuvers. We'll have customers in here getting some early experience. And they give us feedback, too. But notice, look, I, I'm not... You're not doing anything. We're getting, we're getting kind of close to that and, runway and there, It's man. right there. It's, 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 it's really <laughs> easy. I don't Flat. know if you can see that on the camera, but... I'm going to trust Van. There's the runway. So flying this thing is actually mm -hmm. easier than flying a small airplane. That was one of our goals. Here if you go. come from a small airplane, you'll actually find this airplane easy to fly. Watch the console here. See, so, yeah, just heads up, and we're just about 120 feet, and we're going 160 knots or so. And right about here, I'll just kind of pitch up just a little bit. This throttle comes back automatically, and touch down, the nose comes down. And I go into reverse thrust, the speed brake goes up, the auto brakes come on, we're done. That was pretty smooth. Yeah, I go, yeah. <laughs> pretty easy. How can that be hard? So right now the airplane's auto braking on its own. It's just slowing down. The three TRs are up, speed brake's up. It will come to a stop on the runway all by itself without any interaction from me. And if I'd done an auto land, I'd never, I wouldn't have needed to touch any of these controls, but I can't hardly stand <laughs> doing auto land. So. <laughs> I well, got a chance to fly, so I might as well go ahead and do it. Let, let me just say that was a totally great experience. And, and I, I hope for, for you folks out there that you had some flavor of, of what, a, what a, a great airplane this is to fly and, and uh, with, with a great flight, with a great chief pilot like, uh, like Van, it's going to be terrific for our customers uh, as well. Yeah, that's uh, the fun part now. Yeah, yeah, do, yeah. yeah. do we have time for a few more questions or? Oh, here's a, here's a non-pilot question. Will the cabin be similar as the 787 for passengers feeling better? Yes, it will be similar. We've taken a lot of the technology that we, 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 that we developed on the A7 and we've included that technology in this airplane. So yes, from a passenger cabin experience, it will be very similar. It's an upgrade actually over the 777, which was a pretty good... I mean, again, the 777 is a tough baseline. to. Yep. Yep. Uh, so we have, we have improved it, but it uh, took a lot of effort. Yeah. Oh so, oh, so a few more questions, Van, if you have it. you have a couple minutes? You we, we've landed. I know uh, yeah, you may want to. We can take um, off again if you want. Uh, how many airplanes will be in the flight test program? We have four primary airplanes, and there will be a fifth and a sixth airplane we'll use intermittently. But we'll have four airplanes that are basically flying every day, all the time, for about eight to nine months. Oh, really? Eight to nine months? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's the plan. So I think um, just so, if it, so we're just about out of time. For those of you that would like more information, you could go to Boeing.com. There's a reveal section. Uh, you can also sign up for email updates. I, I really hope that you enjoy this time we had with Van Van. I want to thank you for doing a stupendous job. You bet. And I want to thank the, the, the technicians for the, from the ECAB and the ECAB itself for responding so beautifully. I know our customers are going to love the, uh, the 777X. Hey, let me invite you back. When we get a real airplane, come back and I'll show you what we're doing with a real airplane. Okay, if we get a real airplane, we want someone else in the, in the, in the right seat besides <laughs> oh, you can me. Do it. <laughs> you did okay. okay. All right, uh, thanks much. We'll, we'll be having more broadcasts on how we uh, finish building and testing and flying and delivering the 777X. Cool. Take care.